I'm Dan Johnson talking to Tom Fagini about the new, what I call F-Series, because there's more than just one airplane you've come out with. That's right. It's a whole new family for uh, flight design, Dan, and uh, it complements the existing line of aircraft, the CT Super and the CTLS and LSI. It's called the F-Series, as you said, and it will be a European 600 kilo ultralight. It'll be uh, American SLSA light sport aircraft. It'll be certified as a CS23 level one simplified two-seater and as a 915 IS powered four-seater certified by EASA and the FAA. That's a mouthful there. You've been doing a lot of work on this F-Series. Yeah. Well, it's a uh, it's a whole new thing for us. Uh, it's the, uh, the airplane that will be the future of flight design for the next 20 years. It's a very nice, uh, I'll call it a graduation from CTLS, but that makes it sound like it's replacing it, which it is not. Is it that is correct? Not. In fact, we just certified the CTLS ELA to the EASA you know, RTC in Europe. So they're very popular there and people still love them here. A lot of abbreviations there, but basically it's the approval process in Europe to gain a little higher level than some other aircraft. Correct. Good. Okay, let's focus on F2 though. That's the one that yep. is really of interest to our readers or our viewers. And that's the two seat version that is available as an LSA, am I correct? Right, we're calling it the F2 LSA. Okay, so give me a little more information about how it's different and how it's new and fresh for flight design. Well, uh, it's a clean sheet design. Um, it is made from pre-preg carbon fiber as opposed to wet layup. Our airplanes have been made with wet layup manufacturing and now there's a new affordable and easier to use carbon fiber prepreg made by Hexel Corporation which is a US company based in Stamford, Connecticut and uh, it allows us to build the uh, prepreg carbon airframes outside of the autoclave so that makes it affordable. Oh. Yep. That's got to be a big help in manufacturing. And for uh, ownership and repair and things like that in the future too. Ah, okay. No, I didn't. I definitely didn't know about that latter yep. part. That's yep. so. Without getting into the real technical weeds on that, Sorry. tell us the difference between <laughs> wet layup and, and pre-preg in, 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 in sort of layman terms. In wet layup, you roll out carbon fiber or fabric and mix up some epoxy. It's, of course, more controlled than that, but you then you roll it out and use a vacuum bag system to evacuate, ah, the, the, uh, evacuate the excess epoxy. And pre-preg is much uh, thinner matrix of epoxy and carbon fiber so you get a better strength to weight ratio. Uh, it sounds like kind of a manufactured process versus a hand done process. Correct. Okay. It'll be better for the certification of the aircraft too for qualifying okay. the materials. But it still retains all the same strength and marvels that carbon fiber has yeah, offered even, for some it's years. Yeah, it's even better. And you can cut it on a plotter cutter oh. like clothing is done and label the parts and there's less waste. And Anyway, it's a great new wow, thing. So a real big step then yep. in the manufacturing of these airplanes. Yes. Okay. <coughs> when I saw this in Europe, I got a chance to look at this over at Aero just a couple of months ago and I went, I got in it right away because I just like doing that sort of thing and I went, wow, that was easy to get in. Yeah. Tell me why. Well, the CT line has always been a very easy get to get in the camera here a bit. aircraft for people because the doors cut so far forward and there's nothing to climb over. And this is uh, even a little bit lower and the door is even further forward. So it's, it's going to be very easy for people to uh, get in and exit the aircraft. And, and it's, a, it's, it's a feature people really like. Yeah, I mean, and I'm definitely one of them. And you know, it's uh, it doesn't matter whether you're less flexible or not. It's just an easier to turn around, sit down, and pull your feet in. It's yep. Simple. And the uh, forward cut up here that that really helps. You don't have to pull your legs to your knees. A deep knee bend to get yeah, in. Yeah, right. So all good stuff. Um, the inside of the aircraft, it's a. It, bears its resemblance to the CT uh, series, but it's not quite the same. Tell me how that changed. Well, there's, uh, it's, first of all, it's uh, just under three inches wider. Two three inches. Three inches more? Yeah. It's, our, it's you know, already wide. CT but... was already 49, so this is just under 53 inches Jeez. wide. <laughs> and uh, as you can see, there's an awful lot of room behind the seats. There is. And, uh, and so I like to say you can bring your folding bike and your dog, you know, because that's what... <laughs> We get a lot of requests for people bringing their uh, their pets with them flying. I know the audio industry has responded to that. It's Why not the aviation yeah. industry? So right. cool. Yeah, it's a, it's voluminous back there. I mean, yeah. it's a great big space behind it. Right. Almost like you could put some extra seats back there one day. Yeah. In <laughs> fact, 
that's part of the F series is that if you notice there's about uh, just under a foot between the rudder pedals and the firewall and the whole cockpit moves forward the aft ah. bulkhead moves back uh, there'll be a third door on the pilot side and that'll make it into the four-seater. Oh, cool. Well, as we've heard from FAA, that's coming to LSA as well, so your positioning is perfect for that, I would say. Yeah, we hope. Well, I hope so too. How's, how's business for flight design? No, it's great, and we're going into our third year of ownership by Lyft Air, and uh, we couldn't be happier. Uh, Mr. Lindig, the owner of the company, is a great man, a real visionary. He's, he's you know, involved with the Rotorvox and the Horton Flying Wing Project and flight design and uh, he's a really great man so we're very pleased. And there's some synergy with all of them. They're all carbon fiber, they're all Rotex powered, you know they all have similar components and so it's it's great. Well good job for Mr. Lindig there to help scoop that all together into a nice pile that's making the company go forward. So some of the other features on the F series are, as you can see just over your shoulder, the uh, NASA inspired droop leading edge for uh, anti-spin and anti-stall behavior, which is a new requirement by the FAA uh, for certified aircraft. A lot of people call that a cuff. Yes. I don't know if that's the right term, but it's what a lot of people know. Yeah, it's so. a cuff. Yeah. Yep. And uh, the winglets look different too. Yep, it's a very interesting design, designed in uh, computational fluid dynamics, CFD, and it actually does reduce drag and will help increase uh, climb rate. Did the uh, span of the wings, uh, the length of the fuselage, this is all compared to the CT series, which yeah. is what people know, so that's their benchmark. Uh, did some of those values yes. change as well? It's a bigger plane all over. It's a longer wing. You know, the, the fastest uh, CT series was the CT2K, which had a longer wing than the SW, but, uh, and this, this will be great as well. It's a... Uh, I understand people might go, wait a minute, a longer wing shouldn't be faster, but that's not accurate, is it? Yeah, it actually reduces drag down in the, the area where we fly these aircraft and allows the wing to fly at a lower angle of attack, and so that's why you get better cruise. Now you mentioned it's still Rotax power, but which engines are you using in the F-Series for the F-2 in particular here, The F-2 will be powered uh, exclusively by the Rotax 912 IS fuel-injected engine. Okay. No more carburetor for this aircraft? Not for this aircraft. Okay. And uh, how about prop up front? I see this one looks like it's got the Duke prop on it. Yes, we're, that, we're testing several propellers, but the certified version will probably use the Duke prop. Okay. A, a very increasingly popular brand for uh, propellers. Yep. Um, I'm looking at the nose wheel now. Steering is uh, still regular steering, not castering steering. Right, it has uh, push right, go right, rudder pedals, you know, steerable nose wheel. On both uh, seats? On both seats. And uh, it has very light pedal pressure, which is a nice improvement because we have ball bearings in the, on the ah, fork. Okay. And uh, the flight design throttle and brake system, which people are used to having a, a single throttle and a single brake lever, have been incorporated into one single oh. central lever where it's throttle forward and brake aft. A couple other features on this airplane that I've seen them in every automobile I've written in the last 10 years. Right. Airbags. Tell me about that. Well, uh, AmSafe told us that we are the first general aviation company to use structure mounted airbags, meaning they're put into the instrument panel. Not on the belt then. Correct. Uh, the cockpit enclosure is two and a half times more rigid than our existing aircraft. We have uh, going to have dynamically tested seats by AmSafe, uh, inertial reel automotive style oh. harnesses and airbags. Let's talk, let's shift gears a little bit and talk about performance of the F2. How's, yeah. how's, it, how's it holding up in testing and so forth? We may have to slow it down a little bit for uh, SLSA as currently written, but uh, it's looking really good. It's a scooter, huh? Uh, the whole airframe has been designed and, and worked and reworked in computational fluid design, CFD, and that's a virtual computer wind tunnel. So uh, the shape of the plane has been very carefully tailored to reduce drag. I'm starting to run out of questions to ask you, Tom, and you've been able to field all of them, but I got one more. What's this Siemens thing doing on here? Well, Siemens is the worldwide manufacturer of uh, electric mobility products. They make trains, they make 
all kinds of things. Uh, and they have jumped in very early into the electric aircraft business. And uh, they, in conjunction with flight design, took our original F2 prototype and before Aero this year, put their SF50 you know, firewall forward package on it for us to fly it as an electric aircraft. And I know they, they usually measure that in kilowatt hours or something like that, but it translated to horsepower for us, so we uh, understand what it's 76 power. 76 horsepower. Okay. Uh, but usually with a lot of torque in an electric motor, That's as correct. I understand it. So exactly the fact right. that it's lower horsepower doesn't really translate to any difference in performance, That's I'm correct. guessing? We're, we're envisioning uh, a... Uh, 90 kilowatt. This is a 50 kilowatt. We're envisioning a 90 kilowatt oh. motor as the final. The, as the final. Oh, on wow. the, this is the proof of concept. But we're going to be designing the aircraft using uh, structural elements from the four seater, so that we can load the aircraft up ah, with, with enough batteries, batteries that will replace the the other folks, um, so that you can have a two hour mission time and then also have reserve. Wow, okay, so if you're starting to get the message like I am folks that F-Series has some good planning behind it, yep. the fact that this shares features between the F-2 and the F-4 benefits the electric by that battery carrying capability. Yes, it will. Smart thinking. So how do they get a hold of you on the web to ask you that? Okay, uh, www.flightdesignusa or flightdesign.com. Either one then. Either one. Flight Design is the company in, in Germany. Germany. Flight Design USA is your operation in Connecticut. Is right. that right? We have more information specific to the U.S. imported model. Sure. So there you go, folks. You can find all kinds of things about Flight Design. I've reported on this company because it's done a lot of great stuff for many years. All that and much more affordable aviation is available on bydanjohnson.com.